Yes, you can applaud. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming and joining us on this chilly but beautiful day. We are glad to have you here. We're glad that you have come to be with us for this time of worship. If this is your first time here, I'm Tommy McDears, one of the pastors of the church. We're glad that you are here with us. We hope that you will be blessed by your presence here, and we hope that you will come back and be with us again in the days that are ahead. If this is your first time here, there's a card in your bulletin. If you'll fill that out and take it to the Welcome Center, it's right outside the door here after church. We have a gift for you. It'll have a Starbucks gift card and some other information and things in there. We hope that you will pick that up. We also hope you will go to this phone number and text welcome. If you do that, you'll get a written welcome from us, and then you will also get a lot more information about things that are coming up in the, in, just ahead in the church, and we hope that you will want to have that information. If you choose to do absolutely none of that, you're still welcome. We're glad you're here, and we hope that you will come back and be with us again in the days that are ahead. Remember that on the first Sunday of every month, that we have coffee with the pastors in the bell room. On the second Sunday, we have BBC 101. If you want to know more about our church, that's the place to come and find out about it and what we are going to be doing in the future. We hope that you will take advantage of both of those. Also, we are going to be entering the Lenten season in the not-too-distant future at this point. And, of course, Charlotte is already starting the Easter music. Uh, <clears throat> Charlotte picked Easter music before Christmas got here, so that, that nothing unusual about that. But if you would like to be part of that musical, they're recruiting for more people into the choir, and we hope that you'll come and be part of that as well. Uh, they do not want me to come and sing, but they probably want you to come and sing, so we hope that you will come and do that. Today is the day that our Lord has given us as a gift to be able to come to this place and worship Him. Let's join our hearts together in prayer as we begin this time of worship. Holy God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for the love that you bring to us and for the fact that there's nowhere you would rather be than near us. Let your spirit be upon us as we gather in this place and help us to know the wonder of your grace and the beauty of your joy as we come here to lift our hearts in praise of you. For it is in your name we offer our prayer. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing to the Lord.
so wish that you could have met my dad. Um, he was a very special man. We lost him in 94. But I promise you, if he were still living, you would have met him because in the course of my life, when he was living, he missed one piano recital because he was going through chemotherapy. Um, he fell asleep during one piano recital, but he was there. He came to every concert, and then when I graduated from college and I started doing church music in 1980, he did not miss a single Christmas or Easter musical that I did. So he would have been here at some point in time. He, if you went to a party and my dad was there, he was in the room surrounded by people because everyone loved to be with him. He just had that personality that was so much fun. It was very hard to lose him when we did to leukemia. But I remember thinking, you know, if I was God, I would want my dad with me too. But I have the joy of knowing that one day I will see him again. And in addition to seeing my father, I will get to see my heavenly father, who, if you can imagine, loves me even more than my earthly father did. Such a good, good father that I had. And such a good, good father that all of us have in the Lord. Amen? Let's sing about that good, good father that we have. Oh, I heard a thousand stories of one day. Think your life, but I heard the tender whisper of a in the day. Oh, 
Good morning. Thank you, choir. So beautiful. Those words, so powerful. Imagine getting a whisper from God today. It's possible. Let's pray together knowing that God has called us into prayer, has initiated this prayer. Holy God, thank you. We say thank you collectively for calling us to worship this morning, for calling us into prayer, for calling us to sing, for giving us reason to sing. We thank you. We thank you for filling our lungs with air this morning, things we take for granted that we now stop to remember are from you. Thank you. Thank you for meeting us exactly where we are and as we are this morning, as you always do. Thank you for the grace that is freely ours this morning. Thank you for the mercy, all such mercy that you grant to us. Help us to be still. We're a busy people, God. You know that. Help us to be still and to know that you are God and to know today more of what that means, that you are God. Help us to find safety in that, to find refuge in that. Rescue. Rest. Help us to find great hope in that and to find great joy. And as we are still, may we hear you say, Child, I know your way. And I will guide you for my name's sake. Help us to hear you today. Help us to see you and know you and love you and when we leave this place, God. Help us to be your very presence alive in this world. Jesus, help us pray. Join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who <clears throat> asks receives. Those who seek find. And those who knock, the door will be opened. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Prayer is the way we talk to God. Prayer is openness. Prayer is freedom. Prayer is for the brokenhearted. Prayer is for the sick. Prayer is for the hungry. Prayer is for the children. Prayer is for the old. Prayer is for the joyful. Prayer is free. Prayer is God's gift to us. Accept it, use it, and believe it. Prayer works. Holy God, we bring our prayers to you today. Help us to invest ourselves in you and in what you would have us know and learn. For it is in your name we offer our prayer. Amen. Today we're starting a new three-part series called Making Wise Investments. And I want to tell you, Part one is the most important part of this series. If we fail at part one, the rest of it is going to be a moot point, which is why I'm offering the same challenge this year that I offered right after Christmas last year. I want us to join our hearts and our lives together in five weeks of intensive prayer. Lent starts early this year. It actually starts on February 14th. There's nothing quite like a Valentine's Day when you're coming together to, for repentance. 
That doesn't happen very often. We've been trying to decide exactly how to handle that. I suggested that we put a, uh, use the ashes and put a heart on our foreheads. Todd does not think that's a very good idea, so we'll just see how that goes. But anyway, we're going to come up with something that we will do that night on, on, on when Lent begins. But prior to Lent, in the five weeks before we begin the Lenten season, I want us to focus intensely on prayer. I want us to pick a time every day when we're going to stop to pray. I want us to pray for the church. I want us to pray for the people that we're ministering to. I want us to pray for the church staff. I, I want us to pray for ourselves and our families and our friends and the people who are important to us. And I want us to pray about how this church and our lives would be different if we saw every single thing as an investment for God. What if we invested everything that we have and everything that we are for God's glory? How would life change if we saw everything as a gift from the Lord and then we invested everything for God's benefit as well as for the benefit of those around us? I'm convinced that you cannot be a good steward of the life that God has given you without investing in prayer. And if you don't believe that prayer is important, just think about this. Every move that Jesus made was guided by prayer. If the only perfect man who ever lived on earth needed to pray, how much more do we need to pray to try to get things right in our lives? So we're going to start this series by focusing on prayer. And our guide for this emphasis is going to be the three statements that I read to you just a moment ago from Matthew 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. In other words, the first step of a prayer investment is to make your requests known to God. Ask and it will be given to you. James 4.2 says... You do not have because you do not ask. Last week was Epiphany Sunday. We talked about the Magi coming to the manger and finding Jesus Christ there and how the light of, of, the, of the sky, the new star, guided them to go there and to find that Savior. During the course of that sermon, I started talking about my own epiphany and how, how the pastor that I met in, in the church that I ultimately joined became the light that led me to faith. I asked that poor man more questions than any pastor should ever be asked in the course of a year's time, but I asked him over and over and over again, and one of the questions that I asked him was, why was prayer so important? When I did, he said, because God wants to have a relationship with us, and you can't have a relationship with anybody without talking to them. How can you not know that? It was one of those things I had never thought about before. For me, at least up until that point in my life, Prayer was pretty much me asking God for what I wanted and then standing back and hoping he was going to come through with it. For some reason, it had never, ever occurred to me that prayer was about communication, building a relationship with God, which is just another way of saying that apparently I was just dumb as a post because I didn't get that at all. I understand it better now than I ever have. My son called me last Thursday. It was the First time that he had called me since he moved to Seattle. I looked down and I saw his name, just assumed he was calling to talk for a moment. That's not what he wanted. When I answered the phone, his car had died and, and he wanted me to help with it. I wasn't really sure what he wanted me to do from 2,500 miles away, but I asked him what was going on. He told me what was happening. I told him the couple of things that could be wrong with his car and I told him what he needed to do about it. But he had to invest in it. I could only do so much. I wasn't close enough to actually take care of the problem right then. He needed to do some examining himself and then follow through on what needed to be done. More than anything, I think when things went wrong, he just wanted to talk to Dad and, and wanted to hear what I had to say about it. We only talked for about two minutes. He was about to be late for work. He'd had to call an Uber. Uber showed up and he had to go get in the car and leave. But after I hung up with him, something occurred to me, and it was something very important. I enjoyed hearing his voice. It didn't matter if it was just two minutes. It didn't matter if he called because he had a problem and just needed me to try to help with it. It didn't matter why he called. I enjoyed hearing his voice. It was nice to hear him call. We're children of God. He wants to hear our voice. 
He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to be part of our lives. He wants us to ask because he wants us to talk to him, even if the only time that we talk to God is when we want something He'd rather hear our voices than not hear our voices because God wants us to discover that he loves us and that he has a dream for our lives that we can't find if we don't have a relationship with the Father. One of the reasons that I want us to pray for the next five weeks is because I want us to discover God's dream for our lives. I want us to discover God's dream for our church. For the next five weeks, I want us to pray the kinds of prayers that will open the door to God's vision for the future. What does God want for our personal lives? What does God want for our church? What does he want us to accomplish as the people of God? And what part does he want to play in our lives individually in bringing that vision to life both in this church and in the future? We need to pray for God to do something in our lives and through the church that absolutely cannot be done if God is not part of it. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. He wants us to ask for something big, something powerful, something that is absolutely impossible if he is not part of it. I want us to spend the next five weeks praying the biggest prayers that we can think of to pray. If we're praying for something that can be done without God's help, then our prayers are not big enough. I want us to pray big over the next five weeks and to expect God to respond to the bigness of our faith. Part two, Jesus said, seek and you will find. To seek means to hunt for something with passion. It doesn't just mean to hunt. It means to really go out there and to try to find something important. That's what I want us to do over these next five weeks. First, I want us to seek out how we can grow stronger and better in our faith as individuals. What part of our lives need to grow or or what part of our lives need to be completely changed if we're going to have the the life that God wants to give us in 2018. Second... I want us to seek out ways for us to expand our church's influence in this region over the next months. I want us to do whatever it is that we need to do in order to make that happen. One of the ministries that we're developing for our church is a ministry called Catch. We we unveiled that ministry this past fall, and we're going to be showing you more, more parts of that over the months that are ahead. But one of the hallmarks of this ministry is found by answering three questions. Why do people need Jesus? Why do people need the church? And why do people need our church? I'm going to send those three questions out to the church in an email in the days that are ahead. And and I want us to look at those three questions. I want us to pray about them intensely over the next five weeks. I want us to ask ourselves, who do I know that needs Jesus? Why do they need the church? And why do they need our church? I want us to make this a personal quest over the next five weeks. I want us to pray about how to reach that person that has come to our mind for God. How can we bring that person to faith? Or if they're already in the faith but they're not participating in a church, how can we get them into our church? Back when our church was in a down cycle a couple of years ago, somebody came to me one day and they were in a bad mood when they got there and they said, things aren't going well, what are you going to do about it? They happened to catch me on a day when I wasn't in a very good mood either. And so I looked at them and I said, let me ask you a question. They said, all right. I said, in the last 10 years, who have you invited to this church that you weren't invited to just some special event? These people who are already a Christian, but you were inviting them in, who have you invited that doesn't fit that bill? dead silence for just a minute and they said you know I don't think I've invited anybody to church over the last 10 years I said when you're ready to be part of the solution to the problem come back to see me we all have to be part of God's call it is our responsibility for all of us to take responsibility for what it means to be the church for what it means to be the people of God We need everybody in this church to be seeking what we can do as a church and as individuals to expand the kingdom of God and to expand the influence of our congregation in this area. Over the next five weeks, I want us to pray for God to bring us into contact with people who need Him, who need the church, and who need our church. And then I want us to make the commitment to try to reach those people. 
We talk a lot about how everybody is welcome at BBC, about how we're an open-door church. We've got room for anybody who wants to come and be part of the kingdom of God as we are living it out here. We talk about how we have a unique ministry in this community and in this town and how we have something to offer when it comes to faith and fellowship that not every church can match if we truly, honestly, sincerely believe that, then we owe it to this community and we owe it to Jesus Christ to make sure that Jesus and this church are not the best kept secrets in Blacksburg. I want us to, to, to have a burning desire to see people coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And I want that to be part of our investment of prayer over the next five weeks. Since September, our church has distributed somewhere in the neighborhood of five tons of food to the needy in this community. Through our food drives that we have done for, for the food pantry, through the partnerships that we have formed in that, through the Christmas food baskets, through our ministry that we do with our breakfast on Saturday morning, we have distributed over five tons of food to people who needed it more than life itself. They could not have bought what we have given to them. We need to be proud of the fact that our church has done that. But we also need to remember something. Not one person has come to faith in Jesus Christ because we gave them a frozen turkey or a can of peas. Not one. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, those are vital if you're going to truly be a Christian church. You cannot call yourself a Christian and not care if somebody is hungry in this world. But I want us to be just as committed to feeding souls as we are to feeding bodies. So I want us to pray about this. I want us to pray intensely for the next five weeks. What should we be doing if we want to be as successful at feeding souls as we are at feeding bodies? There are lots of things that we do remarkably well, but we ought to be baptizing people every month in this church. We ought to be baptizing new believers because we have something spiritual to offer their souls that's just as vital as any can of food that we can give them. I want us to be committed to that. I want us to pray intensely about how we will accomplish that over the next five weeks. Part three, knock and the door will be open. God wants to open the door of opportunity for us. Revelation 3.8 Behold, I have opened a door for you that no one can close. That is a promise that's made from heaven. And I believe it applies to our church just as much as it did to the New Testament church when it was first written. We've never had more potential for success than we have right now. We're a church that sees every person of, as a person of value. We believe that God can empower every person to do His work and to do His will. Most evangelical church believe that only men can do certain jobs in church. We believe that God can empower every single person to do whatever it is that He's dreaming of them doing. This church does exactly what God calls us to do, and that is see every person as a person of value and to believe that God has something special and important for every one of us to do, regardless of gender, regardless of economics, regardless of where we come from. We have more potential for growth and ministry than any church in this region because nobody is off limits in this congregation. Nobody is off limits to the grace of God, no matter who they are. I believe God is ready to open the door of success to us, but we have to knock on that door. I want us to make a commitment today. I want us to make several commitments today. Number one, if you've never made a commitment to Jesus Christ of your life in faith, I want you to do that this morning. I want you to take this opportunity as an opportunity and I want you to see it as a moment when we can bow our heads and say, God, I know that something has been missing in my life and I now believe that it's you. I want you to come into my life, forgive me of my sin and give me the power to follow you the way that you would have me follow. 
I want you to be the guide and the leader of my life, and I am giving my life to you today. If you have never prayed that prayer or a prayer like that, I want you to take the opportunity to do that right now. If you have prayed that in the past, but you've just never been invested in it the way you should have been, you've never been part of the church the way you should have been, I want you to make that commitment to invest in God right now. And... I want you to make a commitment to invest in prayer over the next five weeks, to pray for yourselves, for your family, for your church, for your ministers, and for this community. And I want you to pray with the confidence that if we pray to God, He will answer, He will respond to what we bring to Him. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds. And those who knock, the door will be open. Let's make that our prayer over the next five weeks. And let's grow to be a people of radical commitment for Jesus Christ. Let's grow into the dream that he has for us. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this time that you have given us. I thank you for the opportunity that's before us. I thank you that you have a dream for us as individuals and a dream for this church that nothing on this earth can destroy. Help us, O oh Lord, to ask you to reveal it to us. Help us to seek what you would have us be. Help us to knock on the door of opportunity that's before us and to trust that you're going to throw open that door and show us what you would have us do. Help us to be radically committed to you today and every day that stretches out before us. Help us to be your people. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. sermon this is time of invitation this is a true time of commitment this really is my prayer for you this is my prayer for everyone for this church how about right now you make it your prayer make it personal I want to know you I want to know your love to know your truth I want to be hidden and found in you I want to give my life away so that others might know you too make it your prayer That you will give your life away And that your hand will always share 
His tenderness, your feet will walk the road that leads to peace. That you bring honor to his name, that you will know him well. And make him known This is his plan This is my prayer for you This is his plan This is my prayer Never a time that we meet someone who time after time opportunity. Help us not an opportunity today. Give us the courage to pray to you and to ask you to come into our lives. Give us the courage to pray to you and to ask you in such a way that our lives would make of your grace and your love. Today is a day that you are giving us the opportunity commitment our lives to you in faith today, O oh Lord. Share our faith. You might take our lives and shape them and to the shape that you want them to be, us, that we might become your love, your hope, the change of the world. Make that our prayer today, O oh Lord. Now, his face to shine upon us day and every day. Amen. God, in front of the church, if you'd like to come and talk about your commitments. God bless you. Thank you.